Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and today we're going to take a look at the Spellslinger Mage. This is the shared tree between Arcane and Frost. They're prodigies of spellcasting that have learned to splinter their sorceries, creating powerful and volatile new effects. Spellslingers can conjure and manipulate these splinters with prowess, allowing them to devastate the battlefield with rapid barrages of razor-sharp crystals. And there's a dev note here that says, They're themed and tuned based on your active spec, Arcane's ones are named Arcane Splinters, and Frost are named Frost Splinters, and uh, the Arcane ones deal moderate Arcane School damage, whereas the Frost ones deal light Frost damage. Uh, these specifics have been omitted from this mock-up. For the sake of tooltip readability, uh, both Splinters serve the same purpose. So let's get into it uh, with Splintering Sorcery. So Arcane says, when you consume Nether Precision, it conjures a splinter that fires at your target. Uh, and Frost says, when you consume Winter's Chill, you conjure a splinter that fires at your target. Uh, the splinter does damage over 16 seconds, and the effect stacks. And remember as well that the, the Arcane ones are going to deal more damage than the Frost ones. Uh, presumably you're going to fire more of these Frost ones, though. And I guess Frost already has, like, icicles as well that are kind of a similar theme here. Let's read the bottom node next, which says, Splinter Storm. Whenever you have eight or more active embedded splinters, you automatically cast a splinter storm at your target, which recalls all embedded splinters, dealing their remaining periodic damage instantly. After a brief delay, unleash a devastating barrage of splinters, dealing damage to your target for each splinter in the splinter storm. It also gives you either clear casting or applies winter's chill uh, to its target. So, okay. Um, some incentive here to build up to eight as much as as much and as quickly as you can, and uh, yeah, do this kind of cool like if you ever played League of Legends like a Zaya ult thing, right? Uh, or Zaya feather feather storm thing, uh, kind of cool there. We have Augury abounds is up next, which says casting Arcane Surge conjures eight splinters. What a surprise! Eight is the number we need for Splinter Storm to go off. During Arcane Surge, whenever you conjure a splinter, you have a 100% chance to conjure an additional splinter as well, which I assume isn't going to apply to these eight. I assume you're not getting 16. Uh, but whenever you proc them during your surge, uh, you're going to be getting extra ones. And Frost gets the same effect for Icy Veins as well. Um, so, okay. Uh, free splinter storm in your cooldowns, and then probably an extra one, one and a half splinter storms for the duration of your surge and your veins. Um, so, powerful there. Controlled Instinct says, when a target is under the effect of Nether Tempest or Winter's Chill, 20% of the direct damage dealt by a splinter is also dealt to nearby enemies. Uh, damage reduced beyond five targets. And uh, direct damage from Arcane Splinters resets the duration of Nether Tempest as well for Arcane. Splintering Orbs uh, says that the first eight times an enemy is damaged by your orb, you conjure a splinter that fires at the damaged target, and the damage of your orb is increased by 10%. So... This means that you're, if you're on a single target, actually, it doesn't even matter if it's single target or not, because you only need to have eight or more active embedded splinters. They don't even need to be on the same target, right? So even if you, you know, you cast your frozen orb into five targets, it quickly ticks and gives five of them a splinter. Then it ticks again and gives another three of them a splinter. And now it's exhausted its free splinters. You're still going to cast Splinter Storm, recalling all of those splinters, dealing damage to all your enemies. And then blasting your your current target for uh, for damage as well. So that's a cool way for this to work. That's going to be, be... It's not going to scale insanely in AoE, but it's also not going to grief you for being in AoE, right? Like, you're not going to lose a Splinter Storm because you press Frozen Orb in AoE instead of saving your single target. Um, nice, I like that. Over here, we have Slippery Slinging, which says you have 40% increased movement speed during Alter, or look again which says Displacement has a 50% longer duration, 25% longer range, and leaves behind a mirror image. Um, I wonder if that mirror image will provide you damage reduction. I assume no, because I assume that's just when you press mirror images that you get that. Um, that would be an important part for making this an obvious choice for uh, PvE. Uh, but either way, nice little utility node. You could certainly imagine getting value out of either of these, uh, depending on the fight situation. I suspect that Look Again is going to be the... Uh, main one that you'll kind of just default to because uh, that'll be easier quality of life to get to usually when you press alter you don't need movement speed all that often but sometimes you do sometimes it is a very nice thing uh to have up next we have reactive barrier which says your prismatic barrier or ice barrier can absorb 50 percent more damage based up to 50 percent more damage based on your missing health 
uh, which maximizes its effectiveness when under 50% health. So as long as you press it at 50% health, you're not losing value instead of pressing it at 10% health, uh, and you're going to get 50% more value on your barrier. Powerful. Um, barrier, you know, it's a little bit of a weird effect because often in high-end content, you're going to want to be pressing these buttons at full HP to provide you value against a one-shot. Uh, but it still, you know, when you do press it below 50% health, you're going to be very happy for it to absorb more. The other option is Phantasmal Image, which says you get an extra clone off of your Mirror Image, and Mirror Image now reduces all damage taken by an additional 5%, so a nice default. Uh, or I guess not default. I think the default here is probably going to be Reactive Barrier even, but making your Mirror Image more powerful will be nice uh, as well if you want to do that instead. Two good defensive options. I wonder if Reactive Barrier will work on Mass Barrier as well. Um, if so, then that will be very nice for something that's already very powerful. Volatile Magic says whenever a splinter is removed or recalled, it explodes, dealing damage nearby enemies, reduced beyond five targets, or Unerring Proficiency, which says each time you conjure a splinter, you increase the damage of your next Supernova by 18% or Ice Nova by 6%, stacking up to 30 times. So giving you a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a, you know, I guess, what was it? There was the uh, Cold Heart for Frost CK, a little bit of that kind of play style where it's like, hey, here's this button. We're going to make it good. We're going to give you 30 stacks, something that makes it do a lot of damage. Then you're going to press it at like 28 plus stacks or something. Uh, and cool. Yeah. Neat. Shifting Shard says, Shifting Power fires a barrage of eight splinters at random enemies within 40 yards of registration. So again, another button that's just going to give you a free splinter storm, right? You're going to have a free splinter storm every time you cast an orb, every time you cast a, your major cooldown, and every time you cast Shifting Power. So... You're going to be doing a lot of splinter storming here. And uh, again, this is going to be fine in AoE, but also fine on single target. You're not going to be gaining or losing splinter storms either way. Spellfrost Teachings says that dealing direct damage from a splinter has a 5% chance to summon either an Arcane Echo or an Icy Comet that deals damage to all nearby enemies and, crucially, increases the damage they take from you by 6% for 6 seconds. Now, the direct damage from a splinter, I assume, is the upfront initial hit, which, notably, you're going to be getting a lot of those... Like, you're going to be getting some of those randomly, right? Just whenever you're consuming your Nether Precisions and your Winter Chills. But you're also going to be getting 8 upfront hits whenever you press your major CDs. You're going to be getting 8 hit hits over a short span of time when you press Shifting Sands, or Shifting Power, rather. Uh, and you're going to be getting 8 over a short time, especially in AoE, whenever you cast your orb, um, which means that the chance that they have this damage taken increase on them when your splinter storm then happens is very high because a lot of your splinter storms are going to be happening not just when you finally apply the eighth uh, splinter, but often you're going to be having like two splinters randomly on the target and then you're going to be pressing icy veins and you're going to shoot eight splinters and you know, you're going to have a huge chance here uh, of proccing a... Uh, Icy Comet or Arcane Echo, and 6% more damage. Cool. Force of Will then says, 2% increased critical strike chance, 5% increased critical strike damage. That one is not... Even I can't talk for a minute about that node. That's just some, some value. Makes the crit stat better. Um, very nice, obviously, for Frost as well, trying to get to Shatter early in an expansion. Uh, that'll be potentially very valuable there. But even late in an expansion, crit damage starts to be really good late in the expansion, so... Cool little tree here. I suspect that this one is going to be pretty fun. Uh, it doesn't really ask too much of you, right? You know, press your buttons and splinters are going to get applied to targets. Hopefully it looks cool. Hopefully, you know, you can feel them getting recalled and uh, and then sending your, sending your splinter blast at them, your devastating barrage of splinters. Um, and also hopefully... The play style, if, you, if unearned proficiency is good, hopefully that is fun as well for mages. I don't know. I haven't played enough Frost or Arcane this season to have a really good idea of whether this would be a fun addition to the spec. Maybe Volatile Magic will just be the best option or a viable option anyways, in which case you just take that and you know, don't worry about it. All good. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Um, gonna keep making these Hero Talent videos, even though yeah, the view count on these things has not been too great once, uh, once it's more than a day or two after the trees actually came out. I'm gonna try and make videos for all of them anyways, so uh, if you enjoy them. Uh, do appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.